Hi, this is Spencer Dupre. Today I'm going to show you how I made this. Okay, so today the technique I'm going to be explaining is called rotoscoping. It's where you trace like every minute, tiny little detail around an object in a video. I really recommend that you don't use this technique. You should be smart and use a green screen. It's a lot easier to separate one object from another when you can just erase all of one color like green or blue. But if you find yourself stuck like I was, here's how you do it in Blender. Right, so we start out with our default scene here and the first thing we want to do is get rid of the cube. So press X to delete and get rid of the light, so press X to delete. Grab the camera, um, by the way you select things by right clicking. Grab the camera and do Alt G and Alt R, which will put it in the center facing down. Then press G to grab and Z to constrain it to the Z axis so it only goes up and down instead of side to side. Hold down control so it snaps like this and just move it up a few levels is just how I like to do it. Then press 0 on your numpad and that will take you to camera view. And press N to bring up your right uh, properties panel here and go to background images. Check that and click add image then expand that and choose open and find the footage that you need to trace. So here's my clip. Alrighty. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you've got your dimensions set up right. So over here in the render settings choose the preset uh, for your video if you're like in my case I'm using 720p footage so I just use the 720p preset. Um, if your footage has a different size just plug in those numbers and then also I'm going to set the frame rate to what mine is which is 2997 which is the unfortunate standard of the US. I'm going to increase the number of frames here a bit and then I'm going to find the spot where the action actually gets started, which is about, uh, we'll start at, at like 325. So here in the settings for the background image, in our little end panel here, I'm going to choose offset and set it to 325. Now what I want to do in this shot is trace uh, this guy right here because he's going to fall off of this and we're going to make it, well, we made it look like an airplane wing, right? So, <clears throat> well, it's sort of an airplane spaceship. But anyway, if he's going to fall in front of that, or he's going to fall back there and he's going to fall in front of the wing, or the pixels that make up the wing are going to be behind him, right? But Blender doesn't know that that's a guy. To Blender, those are just some colorful pixels. So we have to tell it which pixels are him and which pixels should get turned into the plane wing. So we need to start rotoscoping right about here when his foot crosses over that line. Alright, so that's where we're going to start at frame 86. I'm just going to set my start frame to 86. Okay, and then you want to add shift A to bring up the add menu. Add a curve circle tab into edit mode and press W and subdivide that circle um, into many smaller pieces. Then grab some of these nodes and start moving them to line up with um, what you want to trace, in this case our guy. And like I said, this is a painstaking process. Oh wait, I'm getting all ahead of myself. Look at that. So go to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and then search for Roto, and enable the Roto Bezier add-on. <clears throat> and now we should see the Roto Bezier tools appear over here in our left toolbar. And I'm going to turn off Handles. Actually, I'm going to turn on I'm going to set White Matte. And then I'm going to turn off Filling and leave Handles on. Okay. So now we've got a much cleaner interface to work with. And so now I'm just, just going to keep moving nodes to where they need to go. If you don't know how to work Bezier curves, I recommend you just play around with them for a bit. They're a really clever way to make curved lines out of single points. So every point has these handles. 
and by moving those handles you can create a curve shape with a lot fewer points than you would need if you were just going to make a lot of points to make the curve shape. So that's great. We're just going to grab all this, move it where we need it to go. Alright, and if you find that you need more points, you can just select two of them and choose W subdivide. Well, press the W key and then choose subdivide, which you can also find subdivide here in your toolbar. It is somewhere right here. So anyway, you can find that and it will create a new point in between the two that you selected, which is very handy. So I'm just going to line this up with the shoe a little better. And I'm not going to do this super detailed because I already did all the work and it was painstaking and it took forever. So I'm just doing this to show you how to do what I did. Because I'm amazing, I know. As a special effects artist. All right. So, just do all that. And I think I could use another point in here. All right, so now that I've got this frame all set up, I'm going to go to the Roto Bezier tools and choose Insert Keyframe. And now it's keyframe for animation. You can see a little yellow bar down here in the timeline to indicate that. And now I've found for simpler action, you can just go every other frame. So I'm just going to press my right arrow key there twice to go forward two frames. And I'm just going to grab a whole slew of points here, try to move them back in line and grab a few more over here and then that looks good so I'm just going to select them all and choose insert keyframe so now if we go back two frames and then go forward and it all lines up pretty well although I realize I was a little sloppy here I'm going to adjust around this shoe a bit Alrighty, and the shoulder. And you can really just make this as detailed or as sloppy as you need it. To. You just need to do whatever you need to, whatever kind of detail level you need to get from this. Even in my finished product, I didn't trace every single little detail because I knew that the audience isn't really going to notice that because it all happened so fast. And maybe if you sat and picked it apart, you would notice it. But see, people aren't concerned with that. They're more concerned with like what the story is that's going on right now, not, you know, are these special effects perfect. If it looks wrong, they'll, they'll know that it looks wrong. But, you know, other than that, you can get away with a lot. So I'm going to reinsert this keyframe. All right, much neater. And then the rest is just rinse and repeat. You just do that over and over and over again. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out SpencerDupre.org.